Today's transmitters are more stable and reliable than ever, but it is the job of the transmitter engineer to make sure that they stay that way. In order to accomplish this, regular monitoring and testing of the system must be carried out. Of all the equipment at the transmitter site, the RF components usually receive the least attention and therefore can be a blind spot for the engineer. Monitoring and checking the transmitter's output power, bandwidth, out-of-channel emissions, filter tuning, line matching, bullet condition, as well as the entire RF output chain from transmitter to antenna input is a big task, but with the right tools it can be done. It does require specific equipment and training which many stations and engineers may not have. But even if you hire an RF consultant, it's helpful to understand the hows and whys of all this testing. This tutorial will address this by demonstrating the tools and equipment used to monitor and test the RF output levels of a modern transmitter. Measuring power levels is one of the most fundamental tasks for any transmitter engineer. Whether it's the output of an exciter or the transmitter itself, doing it correctly is always important. The inline wattmeter is a simple tool that lets you measure power levels from milliwatts to over a thousand watts. The signal passes through the meter and is terminated. A sample element is inserted into a socket on the meter to measure the signal. The element contains a diode that turns the RF sample into a DC voltage and drives the meter. The meter has several scales so that different power levels can be read correctly. The elements come rated for different power levels and frequency ranges. Rotating the sample element allows measurement of both forward and reverse power levels. These units are small, handheld size, with built-in meters that allows them to be used wherever they're needed. They are connected by cables, usually with type N connectors, so that they can be inserted between the output of a device and the input of the next one. One place these meters are very useful is when measuring the IPAs, or Intermediate Power Amplifiers. These amplifiers are usually arranged in a parallel configuration, and if one fails, power is reduced. Using these inline watt meters can help you quickly find the fault with an IPA. Other inline watt meters come as transmission line sections with a socket to insert the element for measuring power. They are connected to the meter through a coaxial cable to allow readings in a more convenient location. Some sections come with two sockets for measuring both forward and reverse power at the same time. These sections come in a variety of line sizes. Some even come with panel mounted meters for permanent installation. But they all share the same elements used to actually measure the power. The simplicity of these meters and the fact they don't require any electrical power allow them to be put in place and used continuously. The basic function of monitoring forward and reverse power is done easily by using these inline watt meters. When higher power levels need to be measured, such as a full power transmitter, calorimetric power measurements can be used. The RF signal is connected to a load, and the heat given off is measured and converted to watts. This is how the
the National Institute of Standards and Technology establishes its own RF measurement standards. For broadcast stations, the station's dummy load is connected to the transmitter's output. Water is circulated through the load and the temperature of the water entering and leaving the load is measured as is the amount of water flowing through it. From these measurements, the amount of power being dissipated in the load can be calculated and converted into watts. With these values in hand, the output power is derived from this formula. Starting with the flow in gallons per minute, it is entered into the formula. This correction factor is supplied by the meter's manufacturer. In this case, we'll assume the meter is correct at all flow rates and requires no correction. The delta T, or difference temperature, is the difference between the input and output water temperatures. In this case, it's 10 degrees. CP stands in for specific heat of the solution, which just means how much heat it requires to raise the temperature of the coolant. In this case, the coolant is a 50% mix of Dowtherm SR1 and water. The letter P stands in for density of the solution, which is how dense the mixture of the SR1 and H2O is. The last part of the formula is a constant. It converts the heat generated by the R of power into kilowatts. And so, with a flow of 12.5 gallons per minute, a temperature delta of 10 degrees centigrade, and a 50% mixture of glycol and water, the average transmitter power output is 27.89 kilowatts. When using a pure water coolant, the formula becomes simpler, but most modern transmitters are now use a glycol water mixture. Here you can see the digital thermometers are inserted into temperature wells to allow for accurate measurements. Calimetric measurements of the transmitter power output have been used for decades to perform power calibrations on transmitters. They would be performed on a regular basis in order to calibrate the power meters on the front of the transmitter. Even though the formula looks complicated, the actual measurements are very basic. Temperature in, temperature out, and the flow rate. Its main drawback is that the measurement had to be made while the transmitter was not on the air. But newer methods have overcome this problem. Today, the most common way to measure RF power levels is with a digital RF power meter and a calibrated directional coupler. The digital power meter is attached to a power sensor that detects the RF using either a heat sensor or diode. The heat sensor is used for measuring high average power levels. Thermocouples are used and can measure RF power levels up to plus 44 dBm. Diode power sensors can measure power levels more quickly and therefore provide a faster response to changing levels. They can also measure levels from minus 70 to plus 20 dBm. The diode sensors are frequency sensitive and thus require a correction factor to be entered into the power meter for the particular frequency being measured.
The digital power meter is a very sophisticated instrument that can perform many different calculations for the engineer. They can provide average and peak readings, as well as the ratio of the two. They can display the power in watts or dB, and can display the relative level between two measurements. Digital RF power meters do not work alone. They must work in conjunction with a directional coupler. A directional coupler samples a small portion of the RF signal to be measured in only one direction. Directional couplers come in two varieties, fixed cabled units for power levels up to about one kilowatt and adjustable units that are attached to transmission lines. The adjustable directional couplers are mounted on a transmission line, either rigid coax or waveguide. The probe is then extended down into the RF energy flowing past it within the transmission line. By precisely aligning the probe's depth and rotational position, an accurate and meaningful sample of the RF can be made. By knowing the ratio of the sample level to the actual RF level in the transmission line, it can be stated in decibels that represents the drop in level between the actual signal and the sample. So, when the directional coupler is stated to be minus 53 dB, it is providing a sample that is 53 dB below the actual signal level. Stated another way, when 20,000 watts of RF is flowing inside the transmission line, then the directional coupler provides a sample of 100 milliwatts to the meter. This provides the RF power meter with a small enough signal to be measured and not damage the meter. By knowing this ratio and entering it into the digital power meter, the actual power level can be displayed in either watts or dB. Use of the digital RF power meter has generally replaced calorimetric power measurements in television transmitters. Using digital RF power meters is quicker, easier, and can be done with the transmitter on the air on a continuous basis. It must be remembered that these meters require calibration at regular intervals. This can be done on a regular basis by utilizing their built-in zeroing and power level calibration functions. But they must be factory calibrated every one to two years to maintain their accuracy.